Hey there, Peanut. What are you doing? Oh, your eyes are going green. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. No, Peanut, I didn't do anything. No. Hey there, how's it going? Are you good? Brilliant. So, what I've got for you today is this. Now, this is my sub out of my car. This box was made for my car. And if you've seen my previous videos, you will know about this. And if you haven't seen my previous videos, if you're new to these videos and this, um, well, it's tuned to about 28 hertz. It's, uh, that's the sub, it's an 18 inch SMD. It can handle roughly double its rated power. It's rated for around three and a half thousand RMS. And uh, I give it roughly six, something like that, in my car, when it's in my car. I don't give it anywhere near six in the house because neighbors and um, neighborhood. This, in the previous video, I modified and it is no longer peaky. Uh, the mid bass has calmed down and the lower frequencies have been enhanced. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out here. Now past experience with polyfill and speaker cabinets tells me that polyfill works best on smaller cabinets. This is quite big, but I'm gonna do what I did with that to this. And hopefully there should be some difference, but not. I'm not expecting that much to be honest, because it is quite big. Now what polyfill has done with these speakers is lowered the frequency response slightly, the curve, and um, it's taken away the peakiness of the bass, that um, higher mid bass, and brought up the lower frequencies, which is good because that is what I want. So that has been beneficial because this living room seems to love mid bass, 50 hertz, 45 hertz, 50 hertz, 55 hertz, that sort of area. So what I'm going to do with this is something similar. Now, um, if you're new here, then you're going to be looking at this thinking, well, look at the condition of that. It is such a mess. And yes, I agree. This thing is like uh, 10 years old or something now, and it's been doing its job for all that time. And uh, yes, there's screws still in there. There are uh, marks and stuff all over it because it's been in the back of my car. And um, it's it's, it's, um, yeah. <clears throat> now then, what I've said about this in a previous video is that it reaches quite low frequencies, and it does. It can get down to 15 hertz quite easily, and I do get the odd numpty coming on here and saying, oh, how is that gonna reach 15 hertz? IMAX cinemas barely even reach that themselves. Well, who cares? I don't care, why do I care? Although to reach significant amounts of dBs, the volume's got to be quite high, it does reach it. And in movies, that is noticeable. Um, you don't hear 15 hertz as well as, say, 25 hertz, but you feel it. And that is what this is for. I use it for movies in my car. I used it for chopped and screwed tracks. I'm not really a high frequency bass type of guy. I knew what it was capable of and that is one of the reasons I moved it into the living room. I like movies and I like explosions in movies, I like lots of stuff in movies, earthquakes, whatever. This replicates them perfectly. Okay so this is being powered by that and that is putting out roughly a thousand watts RMS at four ohms. At two ohms more or less two thousand watts RMS but this is wired at one ohm and that is why the volume on this is barely even at a quarter. Now the frequencies coming from the PC have been EQ'd at roughly 60 hertz to around 35 hertz, so there's a bit of a dip um, because this room likes to resonate at those frequencies. So um, yeah, any lower frequencies coming from this are just lovely, and that is the hand gesture for lovely. I use roughly a third of this in this and in the other one, so I have that and I have this. Now the, frequency now the frequency response of this box is pretty good. This, by the way, is more of an experiment because I've never tried it on a bigger box. In my experience, these smaller speaker cabinets have a more of a change in frequency response than bigger cabinets. This, I'm not expecting much of a change from, but I am expecting a slight change. The, there was a big difference made with this, um, and that was beneficial. This. This video is more of an experiment, let's just put it that way. August is spider mating season, and um, see that on my thumb? There's a few of these going around. House spiders. 
August to November or something like that. Um, let's take this out. In case you're wondering, there's quite a bit of room there between these speakers, roughly two inches. And this, by the way, reaches nowhere near maximum excursion, so you don't have to worry about that. How do we get rid of scratches on a black box like this? Well, there's a few ways you can do it. And one way I'm going to do it is by using this. This is a permanent marker. Paper, mate. Right, so here and the rest of this in three two one right so and as you can tell that is how much i care about the scratches and things on this box also i've got rid of the faded mark on the front of it and now once again it's time to take this out electric screwdriver number two right so seven more to go it's a good job i'm using an electric screwdriver isn't it are you a tit Okay, so that's all these out, thanks to my trusty electric screw. Okay, so the last time I took this out, what I learned was that the wires connected to this are long enough that I don't need to disconnect them from the amp. As most of you will know, the next step involves some tilting and pulling. So, um, let's tilt and pull. This is how I take this out, so grab it and pull it like this, and then this this will fall out, so um, come on. Like so. And then I put my hand there and let the box go back to the floor. Make sure the wires don't get trapped underneath it. And then I pull the sub out. Like so. Now I can just disconnect these wires and on to the next step. I don't normally fold my jeans like this, by the way. That was just because. I was asking about with a vacuum cleaner. There we go, back to normal. Folded jeans are weird jeans. I never, never usually do that because my jeans actually fit me when well, they're not hanging low. Now I'll put this on the floor. Right, so. Guess this is how it feels to drive a bus. Okay, so before I start spraying the inside of this box, this is the glue I'm gonna be using. And this polyfill stuff that I have is loose. It's not in sheets. You can get it in sheets, but I got it loose because it's easier to find. So to keep this all from unraveling inside the box, what I'm going to use is this glue. And this is going to act like hairspray because this is kind of like hair. And what it'll do is keep it all together. So um, yeah, that's my way of keeping this together. I don't know of anybody else that's using this technique, but uh, that's my technique. So use it. These were originally holes for the wires, but uh, they were patched up because I didn't want the holes there. Right, so let's get to spraying. So if this turns out to be not what I want, then just remember this is an experiment. Go like that and then place this on, sort of rub it on like this. And as you see, it sticks. After I've stuck all that on, what I'll do with this is just spray over the top and then this will act like a super strength hairspray and it'll keep all this stuff on the top in place. That is my original idea, by the way, hairspray. I did it two videos ago. Um, so yeah, I'll continue with the rest of this and uh, yes. Okay, so this box is now done and similar to what I did with the Sony speakers, if you haven't seen what I did with those, then check that out right there. I've just gone and stuck it to the edges. So I don't think I've even shown you the inside of this box, but yeah, here we have some bracing. Um, don't know if you can see those numbers, but there are numbers on there. Not only do you have to take into consideration the displacement of the speaker, but also anything like this. And that is what those numbers represent. Anyway, so um, I've put this on the edges. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and spray it on the surface of the polyfill. That's so that the fibres aren't detached during any bassy moments 
that the speaker box might have. Okay, so the inside of this has been sprayed with adhesive and that will prevent these fibers from detaching. And look who we have. Okay, this glue has now dried, so I'm gonna put this back together and this kind of feels like candy floss now. Cotton candy, whatever you call it, which is uh, pretty good. That's a good sign of it all being stuck together. So tune in next time and I'll be going through the EQ settings on my computer as well as testing these out, these Sony speakers, and then testing this out. Um, and I'll probably change some of the settings on my computer uh, and show you what I've done to compensate for room resonance. So uh, if you're interested, come back. If you're not, then um, see you later. Yeah.